Yeah. We got London on the track. This is all track. guys doing, man. You can't plan it. But if the devil's in the details, then I'm satanic. People's kid, how we doing? It's your boy Kobe back from another video. And as always, I hope you guys are having a blessed day. Real quick before starting, for anyone new or who didn't see my last video, make sure to enter my end of year giveaway for a chance at an Amazon or NBA store gift card. It's real simple, all you gotta do is check out my Shaq video if you need more details. Anyways, today I have a short but still solid video about a player who had one of the strangest in-game injuries you will ever see. We will also do a bit of a college basketball rewind, which I always love as a huge college hoops fan, so it should be a lot of fun. So yeah, with that said, enough of the intro, and let's get right into the video. If you had to name the top 5 college basketball programs in the country in the year 2017, who would you say it would be? Well, if I'm being 100% honest, I would have to say in terms of success and prestige, most people would have some sort of combination between Kentucky, Duke, Michigan State, North Carolina, and maybe the Kansas Jayhawks. Now shout out to anyone watching affiliated in any way to one of these schools, but this video does not discuss your college at all. In fact, this video revolves around a player who competed for the college basketball program that might very soon take your beloved school spot in the top five. And this school is none other than the Villanova Wildcats. Having won the NCAA tournament in 2016 and carrying the most wins of any college basketball team since 2014, it is hard to dispute that the small school in Pennsylvania is already among the elite teams I just mentioned year in and year out. But this was not always the case, and the flat out dominance from Nova you see nowadays is still in its infant stages. Of course, Villanova does have great history during the 80s defeating Patrick Ewing and the Georgetown Hoyas in the original David vs Goliath matchup. But after slumping a bit in the 90s, the school has undoubtedly been revamped by Jay Wright during his 17 years as head coach. Before this most recent stretch of dominance, Wright first brought Villanova back on the national scene in the 2005-2006 season with his trio of deadly guards, Randy Foy, Kyle Lowry, and Alan Ray. I'm sure you recognize Foy and Lowry as both have gone on to have successful NBA careers, but I bet there's a chance you may not know who Ray is. Unlike his teammates who did a lot of the damage with the ball in their hands, Alan Ray was the deadly shooter on the perimeter that really made this Nova team so difficult to guard. You know, it's funny. I remember watching him when I was a little kid. I got him confused with Ray Allen, star guard of the Seattle Supersonics. But honestly, who can blame me? One, they were both incredible shooters, and two, their names were pretty much identical, just reversed. Anyways, with Villanova dominating in the Big East this year, Alan Ray went on to average 18.5 points per game while knocking down 2.5 threes per game on a solid 37% from behind the arc. Honestly, for those counting at home, he was actually a far more superior scoring guard than the Raptors' Lowry at the time, and Villanova depended on him heavily for his offense. And with the NBA in his sights at the end of the year, the only thing left for Ray was to help his 24-win, 3-loss Wildcats team take care of postseason play in the Big East and NCAA tournament. But as the story was bound to turn, it just so happens that Alan Ray is not remembered most for his play during these final games, but rather the unforgettable injury he sustained in the 2006 Big East tournament. Going up against Jamie Dixon and the Pittsburgh Panthers, Ray and Nova were in a tightly contested battle heading into the second half. After contending for a loose ball up for grabs early in the second half, Alan Ray is inadvertently poked in the eye by Pittsburgh's Carl Krauser in what was a bang bang play. While it is not uncommon for players to be poked in the eye during a game, it was clear right away to those close to the scene that Ray's eye had a unique response to the contact. In what appeared to be his eyeball coming out of his socket, Ray was sworn by team doctors and rushed straight to the hospital. According to people at the game, you could visibly hear Allen screaming that he was not able to see from the infected eye. And once ESPN and other news outlets caught hold of the actual footage of the injury, they decided not to show the replay of the incident the following day, instead simply calling it an incredibly serious eye injury. So due to this vague type of reporting, what transpired for the next 24 hours was a lot of confusion and speculation from the public that Ray's eye actually popped out of his socket. What it turned out we all didn't know, however, was that Alan Ray's eyeball actually never came loose from the socket, but rather his eyelid went behind his eye, and this is what caused a temporary loss in vision. Once doctors confirmed it as a case of mild soft tissue damage and that his vision would return, news outlets updated the reporting and Ray was somehow only considered day to day. 
thus clearing his way to play in the 2006 NCAA tournament just a week later. What makes this even crazier is that in his first game back from the injury, he actually led his entire team in scoring with 19 points. So with the major injury scare officially behind them, Villanova would go deep into the tourney before losing in the Elite Eight to Joakim Noah and the Florida Gators, who would end up becoming the eventual champions. Since this would be Alan Ray's final collegiate game, he was off to find a place in the NBA with his fellow teammates Foy and Lowry. But in a surprising twist, while Randy Foy and Kyle Lowry heard their names called on draft night, Alan Ray went undrafted in the 2006 NBA draft, something most scouts could not believe. Because despite his small size at 6'2", you would think a 6'8 wingspan and impressive ball skills to create his own shot as a shooter was more than enough to get drafted into the league. The Boston Celtics GM Danny Ainge must have agreed with this because less than a month later, Ray signed a deal with Boston as an undrafted free agent. Ironically, the year right before Ray Allen comes to town, the Celtics carried Allen Ray on the roster and he actually got some minutes towards the end of the 2006-2007 season. Although the situation seemed promising and Boston looked like they wanted to keep him around, Allen Ray bolted to Italy for a $2 million contract after just one year in the NBA. While it's hard to say whether he regrets the move to leave, for what it's worth, at 33 years old and over 10 years later, Allen Ray continues to play professionally in Europe today. So despite our memory of his career focusing primarily on that horrific looking injury, I guess the story of the player who almost lost his eye has a good ending. Anyways guys, that's the video, hope you enjoyed. A little different than my usual videos, but wanted to give some shine to a player I thought was incredibly underrated while in college and thought this story of his eye injury was a nice way to do so. Looking at how it took Lowry some time to develop in the NBA coming out of Villanova, who is to say Alan Ray could not have succeeded in the league if he stayed with Boston for longer than a year? I don't know, just my two cents. Regardless, make sure to like and subscribe as I continue to keep a regular upload schedule on this channel. Hope everyone has a great rest of the day or night. I'll be back at it soon. Peace. Yeah.